sinking everything. Greetings, unsettled souls! <laughs> Sam Naganji doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. You might know me from Blasting News. You may have known me at one time from Facebook. Um, I talked a little bit last time about the future of the show. Um, I Listen, a lot of you stepped up with the shares and the comments, and that's important. That That is vital important. And I have to start the show this way. I have to start the show this way, asking you to hit share, to share this video on any platform that you have, and to make sure you look up the correct views on Gab. I know there's MeWe, there's Spreely, there's, uh, there was Parler. Um, I just picked one, okay? I, I'm not a huge fan of Gab, because unless you pay for it, you can't just go live. So I'm gonna post it, but hey, I'm doing the best I can. Listen, I do want to mention, uh, I do want to mention something else too. The winner <clears throat> of the Golden Dumdy, which I'm gonna have to show you next week because they were out of gold paper today. It's just a paper dunce cap. It's about this big. It says dunce. Uh, the, the winner is Paul Strange. And uh, I need his address. Paul, give me your address. Uh, he gets a copy of each of the last 12 Dunce Cap Awards. Now, there's a problem here. Other people entered, and I only remembered a couple of them, and Paul ended up winning. But that's not fair to everyone who entered. And the reason is because a lot of people entered on Facebook, and I'm one of the people who Facebook has chosen to censor for having done nothing wrong, mind you. I'm one of the people who Facebook has censored. So, I'm going to have to do another contest. You guys let me know what kind of contest would you like to see me do. I have to make up for the fact that a lot of people didn't get their vote counted or even put in for that. So, Paul wins, but we're doing an entirely, we're doing a whole other contest now. And uh, once again, please hit subscribe. I need a lot more subscribers on YouTube now. I hadn't been pushing it, but now I really have to. But uh, Facebook has just about decimated me, friends. It has just about decimated me. And if you'd like to help me out, if you'd like to see more shows, or if you have any ideas, I am looking for a, a place to broadcast from in terms of a, uh, a regular gig, kind of like Hannity, Rush, Savage, and uh, you can also donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. All the money you give me goes towards a better show. And uh, let's get into the Dunce Cap of the Month award, shall we? All right, guys. Um, the, the winner of the Dunce Cap of the Month award this month, it's not political. However, many of the stories leading up to it are. But I, I, I just, I could not believe the level of stupidity that I had a chance to see firsthand. So I simply had to go ahead and give the dunce cap of the month to the to the winner uh, this month. But I have a few stories leading up to it that are really, really interesting. This is from ABC News. San Francisco, or as Michael Savage says, San Francisco, San Francisco, to strip Washington and Lincoln from school names. Now, public schools said that officials deemed that they were not worthy of honor. Now, the reason that this is getting mentioned on the Dunce Cap of the Month Award show, granted it didn't win, but the reason that it's being mentioned is for the, stay with me, you know I go in a direction for a reason, stay with me. The reason that it is being mentioned is Washington owns slaves, okay. So we're doing this for the good of the minorities, particularly uh, black people. Are you still allowed to say black people? Is that a hateful term? I hope not, because I don't mean any hate. Uh, in, order to, uh, in order to appeal and uh, make restitution in some way to black people, the goal is to take down those who have benefited from the evil white privilege. I wish I had my dumb, dumb, dumb music. Miss the fraggle. Anyway, so what are you going to do? You're going to take these names down. You're going to take down the name of the man who freed the slaves who were largely black, 
who freed the slaves because he's not worthy of honor. So the man who made sure that freedom came to black people is not somebody who they find worthy of honor. ABC News, the names of Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, and other prominent figures, including California Senator Dianne Feinstein, I would agree there, will be removed from 45 San Francisco public schools, a move that, stood, a move that stirred debate Wednesday on whether the famous liberal city has taken the national reckoning on America's racist, racist past too far. Now, I'm, I'm going to let the story speak for itself for a moment. Because it, it's so dumb that it's really hard for me to add anything to it. And remember, this, is, this, this just didn't win. And we get dumber as we go. Uh, the decision by the San Francisco Board of... Hold on, I have to do something very quickly. I have to plug this in. I had not seen that. Sorry, friends. Sorry. Sorry. And I have to put something else on so that I make sure that I'm not coming in too loudly. Two seconds, two seconds, friends. And uh, as I take this two-second break, how about I just don't plug the show after this? Uh, we'll go commercial-free, as it were. The correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. The correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. Well, do I have everything that I am seeking? Am I coming in too loud? I don't believe that I am. Everything, everything is right with the world, correctly. Everybody can hear me. Beautiful. Sorry, friends. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The decision by the San Francisco Board of Education in a 6-1 to vote Tuesday night affects one-third of the city's schools and came nearly three years after the board started considering the idea. The approved resolution, it says calls for removing names that honored historical figures with direct ties to slavery, oppression, racism, and the subjugation of human beings. Jefferson owned slaves. Naturist John Moore, Spanish priest, Yen Pyro Serra, American revolutionist, the patriot Paul Revere, and Francis Scott Key, the man who wrote the Star Spangled Banner. Because uh, Diane Feinstein dared to praise Lindsey Graham, and she got taken off. It, it, let me tell you what they're doing. Let me tell you what they're doing here. They are slowly but surely working to erase everything that the company has ever that the country has ever stood for, so that they can easily replace it with their own ideals. And I guarantee those ideals will start encringing upon many people who today are siding with the people who are out there causing the problems as it pertains to erasing our history. Mark my words on that. I want to ensure people that this in no way cancels or erases history. No, not at all, says San Francisco Board of Education President Gabriela Lopez. No, no, what's the sand? Just sandblast someone's name off something uh, and take it off all the mail and take it off the postage. But no, it's, it doesn't erase anything. It does shift from upholding them and honoring them. So they shouldn't even be honored now. The founders of the country, a priest. Anybody who led to the colonization of the country. On and on and on and on. They got rid of Lincoln. This is why America is, you don't like, I put this on my Gab account. You don't, you don't, you don't like Joe Biden? Well, you know what? Let me tell you who to blame for that. The American people for even allowing this to become a close race to start with. We allowed it to become a close race between a man who chose his country over his party. 
And we elected a man who chooses his party over the people at every single turn. Friends, globalnews.ca, PETA wants you to stop using animal slurs such as pig and rat. Now, if someone was to drop an N-bomb, which I'm not in favor of, mainly because I hate hip-hop music, um, if I was to drop an N-bomb, well, they're the ones who use it, if I was to drop an N-bomb, or if somebody was to call me and, you know, I'm Dago Meatball Head. Fair enough. I'm big old meanie Dago Meatball Head. There is a chance, I couldn't care less to tell you the truth, but um, there is a chance that somebody could say, well, that's terrible. What's Sam going to think when he hears that? Peter's out here saying that if you, this, it's not a joke, Peter's out here saying that if you call someone a pig, then that is offensive to the pig. As if the pig understands it. Beyond that, it's, there's, there's been a movement, and you, you can look this up for yourselves, there's been a movement that says that people who have suffered severe brain damage may not be counted as someone who retains their full personhood. But dolphins and some kinds of primates and pigs, they can be considered to have some degree of self-awareness. Some would argue even levels of compassion. Therefore, they have personhood. So that's ultimately where this is going. But the country as a whole is so incredibly dumbed down by this point that there will be a large number of people that listen to what I'm about to say, and they're going to say it's a, it's a wonderful idea. Um, people for the ethical treatment of animals, I always thought it was people for e people eating tasty animals, but okay. And they want humans to stop using animal words like, uh, because it's specious, not racist, specious, implying that we're using supremacist language. Well, I hate to be the one to tell you this. I think Joe Pag said this. We are supreme to the monkeys. We are supreme to fish. In the same way that God is supreme to us, probably to a lesser degree, but you get the point. We are supreme, you moron! Use the thinking part of your brain. The activist group put out the unusual call on its Twitter account Tuesday, where it claimed that animal-related insults, quote, degrade animals by applying negative human traits to certain species. Well, if you call someone a snake, many times that's used for a cheater. When snakes mate, I don't know if a lot of people know this, you're about to, this is why you tune into the correct views. When snakes mate, they tangle their tails together and intertwine them. I'm going to use hateful language here. The male, he said male, and female, the male and female snakes will then copulate. And whatever hole it goes in, it goes in. And then it goes in another hole and she finds another schwang. And this goes on and on and on and on and on. So not only... Not only do we not care if it degrades the animal, like it can understand what you're saying. And I, I'm not for abusing animals, and don't get me wrong. But they are saying that the very fact that it is truthful that snakes do something like that, you still can't say that because it's degrading into the snake. They offered alternative words to rat, chicken, and dog. According to the tweet, words can create a more inclusive word in a world and perpetuate oppression. Calling someone an animal as an insult reinforces the myth that humans are superior to other animals and justified in violating them. Do you know I had somebody on my page tell me that they thought that artificial insemination was a sexual violation and a rape of the animal? 
That's where this is going. It's a Dunce Cap of the Month award. You guy, I warned you, guy. I warned you when you tuned in. We were gonna get dumb. Stand up for stand up for justice by rejecting supremacist language. Instead of chicken, say coward. Rat snitch. Snake jerk. Oh, snake. Well, see, I was thinking there. I, you see where I took it. So yeah, I guess I guess that says a lot about me. Pig repulsive. There you go. I'm a pig. Am I allowed to say that? And sloth lazy. Somebody wrote, six years of vegan. One woman wrote, please stop making us look ridiculous. This is actually, what you think it's bad now? We have elected an administration, not me personally, of course, but we have elected an administration that is sympathetic to these very kinds of foolish thought. Do you think that these people are getting traction within the last couple of stories that I told? Friends, they haven't even gotten started yet compared to what you're all about to actually see and in the worst possible way witness here. This is going to get bad in ways that make the story I just told you sound like it almost somehow makes sense. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think that I hear something in the distance. Yes, friends, it is the dunce cap of the war dumdy music, which should be starting any eon now. Which means we've got, oh no, we've actually got two stories left. I'm one ahead of myself, so my dumb music may have to start. I, I, I did want to get to this, yes, 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 why not? Um, I, I was going to make this the winner, and then I was going to see if maybe I could go ahead and move it into maybe next month, but no, it, it happened this month. And uh, if, uh, if uh, Christelle or whoever was still with the show, they would probably point that out. So let's get to this real quick. What would you say if I was to say that Joe Biden is a provable liar? Well, there's a chance you would say, Sam, you're biased. I know you voted for Trump. And uh, you're just saying it to be mean and hateful and vindictive. Okay. No. Joe Biden said that he was not going to attack the energy industry. Now, this he said after promising, of course, that he was going to attack the energy industry. I'm well aware of that. But he said that he was not going to attack the energy industry. And that he was going to be a president who you could count on in every way to really go ahead and not only unify the country, but he, Donald Trump wasn't the jobs president. No, no, Mr. Joe, sleepy, sleepy yo Biden was going to be the, the jobs president. Firstcoastnews.com, I think it's their first time on the show. Welcome aboard. Verify, yes. Jobs lost from President Biden canceling the Keystone XL pipeline, but not as many as you may think. Oh, so it's not 19,000 jobs. It's really only costing, well, I like, I like their use of only here. Only costing about 11,000 jobs. Eleven thousand jobs. 10,400 U.S. jobs, 2,800 Canadian jobs. Now, if you promise to be the jobs president, don't you think it would be important and rather imperative that you be very good at creating and maintaining jobs, especially when you inherited a... Uh, a very, very good structure to build an economy on in as much as we're not on the gold standard. We're always going to have a mess because of that. But in as much as <coughs> we are stuck in the uh, system that we are in, uh, the, the economic times that we're having now are not caused by bad economic structure from Trump but so much as it is from the pandemic. Joe Biden is going to make it so that even when the pandemic, uh, in theory, if it ever ends, which that's its own dunce cap, even then, we're going to have a continued problem with having 
a lack of jobs. He's putting us back in the Paris Accord. So the man who eliminated jobs has now went ahead and made it more expensive for you to heat your house, to run your car, to cool your house, to put the gas in the car to take the family on vacation this coming summer, if anyone's allowed to do such things ever again. He made energy harder to produce, put 11,000 people or more out of work, and then made energy more expensive for you listening to this in the process. And keep in mind, it is less safe for the environment to do it this way, which is another reason it gets mentioned as a precursor to the actual winner of the Don't Cap of the Month here. Because, oh, it hurts to even say, this doesn't stop the energy from being produced. It just means now it has to be taken overseas. Transported in a boat, or in rigs, on snowy roads through Canada. The pipeline was infinitely safer, and in the event of a disaster, infinitely easier to control than what we now have to use because of what Joe Biden did. And if you think, friends, that that is as dumb as it gets, you are wrong, guys. Dum, 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 dee die. My intro music does not want to play. It will not play. I can't get it to play, and I don't know why it won't play. So you're not going to get it. You're just going to have to listen to me sing it. Dum, 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 dee die. Take a frizzy fry. Yeah, okay, fine. So, friends, the winner, this, this is just the easiest dunce cap maybe I've ever given. This one happened firsthand as well. I'm going to show the actual video of this here in a moment. It's going to be quick and to the point, but the, this is some idea where where I think stupidity in this country is headed. I went to a Dunkin' Donuts, who has won the uh, the Dunkin' Cap of the Month award. I went to a Dunkin' Donuts, and they said, Hello, sorry for any inconvenience, but we currently do not have any baked goods. What? Wait, what? No baked goods. That means no donuts. <laughs> no donuts at the cook at the donut shop. No brownies, no cookies, no cakes, no donuts at the donut shop. So it was needless to say is that that's who the winner is. I, what I'm doing is calling up here everything you're going to want to see because I, I'm outdone myself with the cap this time. I truly, truly mean that I have outdone myself uh, with the cap. Sort by day modified. Perfect. All right, friends. Here is here is the hat. Let me make sure that both cams are both uh, YouTube and a uh, Gab are uh, we're, we're YouTube. That's uh, Gab and my YouTube. The media speaks, I should say, down here. Now, ooh, wish you could tell. I bought scented markers. It was all they had at the store, so I had to get new markers. There's, of course, don'ts. Don'ts. It says uh, there's of course my my infamous no. That's no donut. No donuts at the donut shop. Um, I didn't want to make it political again. The, the Dunce Cap of the Month had been political for a very, and it will be again, trust me. Joe Biden, Joe Biden will get a Dunce Cap, uh, trust me. And, and I didn't want to have to blow, shoot my wad here at the first month. Uh, now, this is great. I did make a little stab at Sleepy Joe in this, though. There is a man questioning. What's he saying? Oh, I wrote, sold out. Well, they won't sell that many donuts with Biden soon. Uh, the destroyer of wages. Soon, no one will have food. Uh, I also drew... Uh, was I just fat shamed? Yeah, they, you go to the donut shop, they tell you, yeah, there's no donuts. It's a very good chance you were fat shamed. Now, I am particularly proud of this one. It's the best I've done since I had help doing the show. It is Dunkin' Donuts logo. I drew it by hand, by the way. That is a Dunkin' Donuts logo with the donuts erased and crossed out. Now, let me show you the video, then uh, I'll show you the award. You guys on, right here I'm pointing to, on Media Speaks, you're going to want to go to youtube.com slash the correct views. 
or you're probably not going to be able to see the video. Although, I don't know if I can call the video up because I am having some kind of strange glitch problem here. But where I go in and ask a lady for the donuts and she tells me she doesn't have any. It was truly hilarious and if at all possible, I would like to put that on. Can I do so? I think I can. Yes, it is loading. It is loading. 8.30 p.m. January 27th, 2021. I was listening to the show. Right, that's the, you know what? It is the other. It's another video. Okay. That you gotta love doing things live by yourself. So let me go ahead and pull the correct video off of this and also read you what the Dunce Cap of the Month award winner is. It takes two seconds. You guys have watched this much of it. I do want to let you know this. I have people asking me as I, if I get this to load correctly. I have had people asking me uh, repeatedly if I uh, about the Moonville Tunnel uh, that I'm going to be releasing as to whether or when that's coming out. Or that is absolutely positively coming out. Oh, probably. Oh, I got the video here. Within the next week or so I will have all of that adventure done. All right, here is the video. As it loads as slowly as can possibly be. This is so funny. Dunkin Donuts. So I have to ask, how does a donut shop not have any baked goods? Because January is our slowest um, time of the year, so we don't make as many, so we don't use as much anymore right now. How am I supposed to stay fat? Show. Yes, friends. Did you, did you know? Did you hear what she said? Did you hear what this, she said? A couple of things there that make this particularly worthy of the winner here. First of all, she said January is our slowest month. Don't you think when you start running low on donuts, company policy might want to be to make some more donuts, you twit. On top of that, is this a could be on top of that? She goes, this happens at all the stores and they come to ours looking for them. So you, none of your stores bothered to make donuts even when this was mentioned to you. So here's the here's the award. It says uh, the Dunce Cap of the Month Award dot dot dot. You are a donut shop that had no donuts. Enough said. And, uh, okay, so there you go. That's the winner. And like I said, the the winner of the Dunce Cap of the Year, Paul Strange, it was the uh, writing gay love letters. That The school was instructing students to write gay love letters to one another. I will make sure that that hat is seen uh, within the next month. I uh, usually mail out the Dunce Cap of the Year, of course, in January. I did not know they were going to be out of gold paper. I went to buy gold paper today. They didn't have any. And I promised to do the show. And the show has been done. Friends, thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing and hitting share. Friends, good night. God bless.